In just in just a moment, we'll be talking to Broadway superstar Sutton Foster. We'll be out here from oh, the yeah. Music Man. Yeah, an, an amazing show. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Another thing I cannot recommend highly enough is that if you're looking for some way to help the people in Ukraine, I just want to say again, in case you just joined the show, go to at Colbert Late Show. We've got a list of charities out there that are on the ground in Ukraine and in the neighboring countries helping the refugees. Give what you can. We need to do what we can. Thanks so much. Heartbreaking, but you're not powerless. Yeah, absolutely. Folks, my first guest tonight is the anchor of CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 and a correspondent for 60 Minutes. He joins us now from Ukraine, where he's covering the Russian invasion. Please welcome Anderson Cooper. Anderson. Hey, good to see you. Anderson, where are you in Ukraine? Uh, I am in a hotel room in Lviv, Ukraine, which is in the far west of the country, uh, relatively close to the Polish border. And it's sort of the transit point where uh, a lot of families, women and children who are fleeing Kiev, who are fleeing Kharkiv or Odessa or anybody who can get out, usually they end up coming to Lviv, the train station. There are about 50,000 people arriving every day at the train station. They're hoping to get further points further west, Poland, Romania, Germany, anywhere. So, um, is it a relatively safe place right now? It is, yeah. I mean, it, the war hasn't come in the same way that it is in, in Kyiv. There there's not rockets here landing, air raid sirens go off every now and then. Um, but a lot of people, frankly, just kind of ignore them at this stage. Although I was in a children's hospital where every day they have to take the kids every time the air raid siren goes off. They have to unplug kids who are, you know, have very severe cancers, uh, take them off their treatment, bring them down to the bomb shelter, wait till the all clear sign. So, but yeah, it's relatively safe uh, at this point. Um, for 12 days, we've been watching the Ukrainians bravely resisting the invasion of the Russian troops. Um, what are the latest updates from the actual battlefront? For instance, wh where is that 40 mile? Uh, Convoy. Column of tanks that we heard so much about north of Kiev. What's happened to that? Yeah, it's uh, it, they believe it's probably a resupply convoy. So there may be tanks and armored vehicles, but also you know gas trucks and, and the like. That still seems to be stalled, and uh, we don't have a lot of details on exactly why. But essentially, the the Russian plan it seems had been to try to seize the airport in Kiev early on, kind of a lightning strike. Uh, that was one of their first targets. And with that, if they had that airfield, they could then just fly in huge amounts of troops and supplies. They were not able to do that. They have not been able to, to fly those supplies in. So that's what that column, it's believed, was sort of heading down to be a resupply column. But it's been stalled. It's probably been attacked uh, repeatedly at various points by Ukrainian forces. There's traffic jams, and they haven't been able to really arrive and kind of encircle a Kyiv as they, they may want to. Well, the, the resistance and the courage of the Ukrainian people has been inspiring to people all over the world, especially yeah. those who believe in the, uh, the future of democracy as the, the best path for humanity and not the boot of autocracy. But there is an attack coming from all sides of this country. Where is the heaviest fighting right now? Right now, I mean, it's it's all over. I mean, Kharkiv has been, uh, which is the second largest city, which is all the way in the east, that has been hit very hard. Uh, Kiev has, there's been shelling, obviously, fighting in and around, in the communities around residential areas. We've seen, you know, terrible, terrible bombardments of residential areas. Um, I mean, the, the images, the sounds of people screaming, uh, finding children slaughtered in the streets is, uh, Hard to ever forget. There's a lot of fighting, very intense in the south. Uh, that's a, a big push for the Russians. They want to try to seize Odessa. Uh, they've already seized uh, um, a town called uh, Kherson, um, which is a smaller town. But the, Odessa is the target in the south. And um, you know, it's it, it, it is unlike the, certainly whatever the Russian plan was. The reality of the attack of the strength of the Ukrainian defense forces and the volunteers has been extraordinary and clearly not what Russia expected. And so they are clearly revising whatever battle plan they may have had 
uh, that has certainly seemed to have gone out the window now, and the Russians are trying to, you know, it seems, according to U.S. officials, that they are just going to now do what they did in perhaps Aleppo or in Grozny, which is just lay waste to cities, lay waste to residential areas to break the back of the Ukrainian people. That is the attempt. But I got to say, I, I've been in, I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I've been in a lot of countries of war. I have never seen a population in a country that has been invaded as unified in their complete loathing of Russia, in this case, of the, of the attacker. And they're just to a man and woman and child, their desire to resist this, whatever may come, resist in the short term. And if there is an occupation because of the overwhelming force of Russians, to resist under any kind of occupation. I've never seen a country as determined and unified. Anderson, we have to take a quick break, but stick around, everybody. We'll be right back with more Anderson Cooper from Lviv, Ukraine. 